So my chemistry teacher is looking for something to hold her beaker stoppers. So she asked me if I could make a box like this where there would be six different compartments, three by two and a half. So I'm going to be using this palette from my pallet wood collection. And I'm just gonna cut it down to size. I'm just I don't want to deal with these nails right here. So I made a mark right there and then in the middle and then all the way on that side. So I'm going to cut that down right now. So now I have these two boards and I just wanted to show you where the nails were so you can see. There's all these like rusty little nails that came from when I used a sawzall and I would cut along this mark right here, this line, and then nail heads would stick in the wood. And then right here you can see that one exploded into all these little pieces. So the wood on the end just wasn't like as strong as that. So these are pretty gross. So before I just like really start working with them, I'm going to give them a quick sand. Nothing too, like, finished. It's just going to be nice and quick to get some of the dirt and grime off. So I'm going to do all sides of these boards, and then I'll get back to you. So this is just a before and after. So this would be obviously before, and this is after. So you can, you can hear, like when I rub my fingers along, it sounds like grainy. When I rub my fingers along here, it just sounds smoother. So this is, this is not anything final, it's just going to be easier to work with because my hands aren't going to be rubbing up against this. So I set the fence to a little bit over five and a half, and I'm just going to rip this board and the other board down to five and a half. Now I'm going to set the fence to exactly five and a half, and then just make the pieces pretty on both sides. So you see, here's the rough side, and here's the side I just cut. So I'm going to make that cut right now. So now both sides are nice and not dirty. So that table saw doesn't really go to 45 degrees, so I'm going to make the cut on this one. So that's 45. And then I'll just check it. Um, yep, that's 45. So I'm just going to freehand this one because I'm just going to line up the tip of the blade with the edge of this piece of wood. That'll give me a 45 right there now I'm gonna mark a line at nine inches and that's going to help me set up my fence with the stop lock on it so I just have that block right there, so that way there's not going to be binding when it hits the blade. So because I use pallet wood, the cuts aren't perfect because the, uh, the wood was splitting a little bit. So you see it's a little curved here because the wood just chipped off and then like in that corner it's chipped off and then where the nails used to be. But I don't think it really matters. Just so same process on this side, I'm going to mark it at 6, I'm going to line the blade up to here, set the fence, and then make the cut. So now one piece is done, and I'm going to 
push the miter over to this side. Line this up like so. Line this up. Put that against the blade. Flip this. I'm just going to line these two sides up and make the cut. And here you can see that these pieces are done. So here's the basic layout of the box. I just have masking tape on the corners. And I'm going to put glue in between the cracks and take it over to my square jig and brad nailer. Just put some brads in just to make it more structurally sound. So I'm just going to do a simple glue up. And just for reference, I put tape here, here, and here. Just so I could unfold this pipe. Now the shell of the box is complete for the most part. So while this is drying, I'm going to start on the base. I just have another piece of pallet wood and it just needs to be cut down just a little bit so it'll fit in the bottom and then I'll need to cut it to length. So I ended up cutting like about two sixteenths off and now it fits. So I just need to cut it to length. So I just put it in the box and that's a little bit over length. But if it's too large I will just sand it down. But you don't want to cut too little off or leave too little left because then you can't add more wood but you can take more off if that makes sense. So let's try this out. Uh, looks like it needs a little bit more off. Let's see right there. So just give it a quick sand job and then we'll retry. Let's try this out. And that fits. So now I'll give this a quick sanding and then I will glue and brad this into the bottom. So since this is a pallet wood project, this wood has a slight bend to it, so it doesn't perfectly sit in the bottom of the box, but I think we can make it work. So I've just laid the box flat so that the bottom of the box will be flat with the bottom of the bottom like the bottom of the middle piece so one of my nails went in bad so I'm gonna have to cut that out and then come back to you so once again that was just another thing with pallet wood I didn't realize that this part was chipped so the nail or the brad came in and then straight off path so I'm gonna do that one more time Okay, that seemed to get the trick. You know. Do the trick, not get the trick, what am I saying? So yeah, the curvature of the wood, uh, put a little bit of a gap in there. You can see it's curving a little bit. So I'm just probably going to use some wood putty or something like that to fill the gap. Or maybe even some epoxy putty, that might look nice. So I've decided to go with this epoxy putty just because I think it'll fill the gap nicer and I'm out of wood putty and I should be able to get a nicer like job done with this. So I'm going to open it up and make it. So it's just these two compounds and then when you cut a little segment off and then you can 
smush it together and that's how you get the putty. So I'm just going to use a razor blade and I'm going to put a glove on and just mix until you have a consistent color. So I have this pretty consistent gray looking color. I'm just going to roll it into a tube, like a little cylinder, so I can fit it in the gaps. So you can see I just put the putty in this in the crack and it's going to dry and harden and then I'll just be able to sand it down and it should look pretty nice in the end. So I'm just going to finish and then get back to you. So you can see I finished, I just went all the way around. Even in the spots that didn't need anything, like right here, I put it in just so when I um, when I finish sanding everything down, there won't be any awkward gaps where there's no putty or anything like that. And even if there was a small crack, it would still be filled. So, I'll get back to you tomorrow when this is dry. So, new day. The epoxy putty dried, and now I'm just going to give it a quick sand to flatten it out and make it look nicer. So, the box inside, I'm just going to spray paint purple, and this is what the wood looks like spray painted. It doesn't look too good on camera, but in real life it doesn't look that bad. And then the bottom, I was just going to like stain it or something, but since the epoxy putty doesn't look as nice as I thought it would, I'm just going to do black on the bottom. And that way the epoxy putty should blend in. And then I just masked off the rest of the wood that I put on staining or putting beeswax on. So I'll take off the masking tape now. Surprise, surprise, I'm using beeswax again on another one of my projects. So here's a before and after. You can see here's what the old wood looked like, and then this is the rich color that the beeswax brings out. And it also makes the wood smell like like oranges. Orange oil, and uh, it gives it a nice smooth finish just because all the beeswax are just absorbed right up into the wood fibers. Just a quick overview so far. So I'm going to split this up into a couple different compartments because there's different size beaker stoppers. So to do that, I'm going to uh, put a piece of this plywood and cut it, put it into dividers. And to get the measurement of the plywood, I just put this little spare block right here. And I'm just going to mark right here. And then that's going to tell me um, like the deepness of the box. So yeah, the lines are pretty close to being lined up, so I'm just going to cut it to the shorter one just to make sure there's no lip that comes over. So I just cut this down and uh, it sits flush here and then it sits flush here as well. So this is the thickness, or I guess you'd call it length, of how big the plywood needs to be. So I'm going to go set my table saw fence to that right now.
Now, I'm not going to give it that much slack in between. Um, no like wait, extra wiggle room that I need to because even if the um, plywood is a little bit lower than the top of this, it'll be okay because it'll it nothing will come over the top. So now I just need to mark right here where the uh, where I need to cut the board so it'll slide in. So right here. So I'm going to make a line right there and then cut it at the table saw. So for this piece, I'm actually going to cut it over a little bit because I can um, take it down, like take a little bit more off and uh, make it fit perfectly. So I'm going to go make that cut. And it's a pretty good fit. So it turns out that the off cut piece that came off of this one to make this short enough to fit inside is actually the perfect size to be one of the cross pieces. See how it just slides right in? So I don't have to make multiple cuts and I can just use this scrap piece right here that's the same thickness as this and then just cut it down to this length. And I'll have my second cross cut piece that'll give me six spots. Perfect. So now I need to cut slots up to the halfway point of this one, and then two slots right here for them to slide into. So I just made this little test piece out of a scrap piece of wood and I, I went in once and then moved over a little bit and then went in again and then flipped it over and then cut again. It's not perfect but It'll do the job for a test. So that's just going to show me that that method will work for the uh, thickness of how thick I need to make that little cut. So I'm going to do that. I thought of something. If I got both of these at the same time, then even if it's not perfect, they'll still line up at the same spot. So I'm going to do that. It'll make more sense when you see it. Okay, so even though this is kind of ugly, it'll be hidden by the um, by the grooves in this board. So this right here doesn't really matter. this part and I'll switch to a, a sky view for assembly okay so I have these two pieces and then I have this piece and they slide in like so So this will just be my dry fit and so you can't see where I messed up or where the blade carved in on this side like 
all this grossness right here that's hidden because it's it goes into this groove. That's what I was trying to say before. It's like 50 degrees outside, so even though there's snow, the spray paint should go on nice. Okay, I'll let that dry and then come back in like 30 minutes for a second coat. So the paint's dried and I'm just going to assemble it again. And we should be good for a friction fit. I don't, I don't really think we need any glue because the pieces are pretty tight already. So I'm just going to slide this on. Okay, so I just, I just took this spare piece and put it over the top and hit it with the mallet a little bit. And uh, now everything sits flush. Okay, well, uh, consider this project done. I mean, other than this little gap right here, which I might put some epoxy putty in, um, looking pretty good. So, I will, I'll be right back if anything else comes up. So I messed around with it a little bit more, and, um, I just made it, I flipped it around once more again, and I pushed it down from the middle, and it all slid in perfectly like it had done before. I don't know why it didn't work before, but maybe, I don't know. Um, yeah, this is it. So once again, this is for my chemistry teacher because she has a bunch of beaker stoppers and she has nowhere to put them. They're right now in a plastic bag and I'll put a pick up right there. And uh, I hope you enjoy. So thanks for watching. So I fidgeted it. <laughs> so I fidgeted it. Fidgeted.